No, but I, I didn't get to do too much this summer. Um, my girlfriend really wants to go to Cedar Point before the season is over. You know, they have Halloween weekends now. And I turned 42 this year, and I realized I think I am too old for amusement parks at this point. I am. I can't do I don't like getting on roller coasters. It hurts my body. <laughs> it's expensive. Going to Cedar Point or any amusement park reminds me of going to a club at 42, you know? <laughs> I'm just waiting in line for two hours. I'm probably gonna lose my wallet. I don't want to be here. It's just a horrible experience for me. I'm not looking forward to it. And to be honest, if I want to keep it real, I grew up in Cleveland. Like, I've been to Cedar Point probably four or five times. The place that I used to go all the time was Geauga Lake. You guys remember Geauga Lake? I'm not the only one who grew up poor in this room. Geauga Lake was fun. Those last few years were very Randall Park Mall-ish, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Kinda messed up putting that one on the bus line, but... <laughs> oh, it wasn't just us white people. There was a lot of Parma in there too. Y'all are not exempt. It was just oh, an outside Walmart at one point. It was just bad. But, but for a time, it was fun. For a time, I actually enjoyed going to Geauga Lake. I was thinking about something, though. You know how you get older and you realize things that you didn't know when you were younger? And I was like, wow, we were really poor growing up. I didn't realize how poor till I was thinking at this one time uh, that we went to Geauga Lake in the 80s. Um, and honestly, we didn't pay to go then either. Remember when it was Cleveland Clinic Day when your aunt who worked at the clinic had tickets? It's like, go take your broke asses out of the house. It was one of those things. And another thing that I remember uh, for all the uh, Gen Xers or whatever is, uh, remember before 9-11 when you could take a cooler into a stadium or an amusement park? We used to do that when we would go to Geauga Lake, you know, but after 9-11, they're like, Bin Laden's gonna blow up Aurora, Ohio, so you gotta buy our $10 cheeseburgers. But before then, you could, you could take your, your cooler in. You leave it in the picnic area, you go to Geauga Lake, you get on some rides, you get on the wave, you almost drown a couple times, you come back and you eat your food. Well, this one particular time we went to Geauga Lake, it was me, my uncle, his friend, and my cousins, and we had our cooler, but since we weren't used to going anywhere or having anything, my uncle, he refused to leave the cooler in the picnic area because he thought somebody was going to steal our coolers. So for the entire time being at Geauga Lake, he walked around with this cooler. He didn't get on one ride the entire day because he was guarding this bounty. And this wasn't some small star from cooler. This was like a casket for an eight-year-old boy. You had to get on either side of this thing and pick it up like a pallbearer. It was huge. And you want to know what he was protecting? the gold that was in this cooler? Bologna sandwiches. <laughs> bologna sandwiches. And they weren't even good bologna sandwiches. You know how you get through half the day and then all the ice is melted so it's just water? And my mother was too broke or whatever to wrap our sandwiches in Ziploc bags so they wrapped in foil so now they soggy. So now you got soggy bologna sandwiches. It's not even name brand pop, it's Fago and lots of pop. You didn't get individual bags of chips, it was that one big bag of dandy barbecue potato chips. So it's just a soup of all this shit, just sloshing back and forth. Poor uncle didn't get on any rides because somebody go steal this thing. All right, unc. Five dollars worth of Aldi's food and you just ruined your day. <laughs> Oh, uh, to be young is a good time. I liked it. I don't know. It's cool, like, everybody being out. Like, uh, we, we as, like, a city, as a country, we all needed this. Shit was getting tense, wasn't it? Everybody's mad at each other. Politics and all this stuff going on. We were doing the, the protest for the NFL for a while. The uh, Kaepernick thing was going on, so black people with solidarity was like, we ain't watching football no more. Then the Browns got good, and we were like, eh. <laughs> uh, sorry, Cap, this is our year. Uh, 
Americans are so fickle. Um, I have an idea, though. I have an, uh, an idea for another protest we can do as black people just to raise awareness for people who get, you know, brutalized by police. It's like, you know what, let's not kneel during the anthem. Let them play football. It's kind of, uh, everybody got pissed at that. But I have my own protest, and I'm going to tell you guys and see if it works. I think to protest police brutality, black men should pledge to stop having sex with fat white women. <laughs> Hear me out. For the past three or four decades, we have been clearing that dead wood off of bars and nightclubs. We will give them chubby women back if our demands are not met, all right? Giving them back to y'all white guys. Y'all take them, all right? You go to Taco Bell in the daytime sober and get her a number one and a number two and whatever the hell else she want. You babysit her mixed nappy-headed kids. Are you my daddy? That's one thing we have in common. I don't know who your daddy is and neither do you, all right? I am here to have sex with your fat mama. But we'll stop. We'll give them back. White guys, y'all took us for granted. Y'all had nothing but skinny, big titty white women. I'll be shopping at Lane Bryant unless our demands are not met. That's a good one. It's a good protest. I don't know. Uh, it's like um, everybody's like talking about uh, cancel culture and stuff like that. I think uh, it's not necessarily cancel culture. I mean, it kind of is. Some people do get canceled, you know. But then on the other side of it, a lot of corporations try to capitalize on the tension that's going on, and it comes across as phony. Like last year, during the George Floyd protests, and they were painting Black Lives Matter in the street, and they were like, we're going to take Uncle Ben's off the rice and no more Aunt Jemima on the syrup. And black people are like, we just don't want to get killed by the police. We didn't ask for that. I don't know what you all are doing. This is the, you're doing too much, all right? It's like when a guy cheats on his woman and instead of stopping cheating, he just erases a few names out of his cell phone. Look, they're gone. We good? It's empty symbolism. It's like having the world's greatest dad mug, but you owe $10,000 in child support. It means nothing, all right? means nothing. You're not doing anything, all right? I've got no more Aunt Jemima syrup. I like Aunt Jemima syrup. I miss that syrup, all right? What is the alternative? What am I going to eat? Mrs. Butterworth? I don't want Mrs. Butterworth. Do y'all remember that commercial in the 90s when that bottle was on top of the table and then Mrs. Butterworth would come to life and she would scoot across the table and start talking to the little kid? I don't want that devil syrup. Give me that diabetic Aunt Jemima syrup. I would rather have that, all right? If anybody got canceled, I think it's Paula Dean. And I think Paula Dean is in that bottle of Mrs. Butterworth. She's trapped like a genie. She was trying to talk to that little kid. She was like, just say nigga three times and I'll be released from my glassy tomb. 